Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Welcome to today's webinar. Discover how ISO standards can assist your organization in achieving business continuity. Organized for you by NTC Learning Hub. My name is Bella and I am the MC for today. We will have a two questions poll for you to fill out before we start. Uh, please fill up the poll that is on your screen. Before I hand over to our speaker for today, I'd like to go over a few items for you to participate in today's event. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter. Type in your questions into the Q&A icon in the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these questions and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. Do note that today's session will be recorded. I would like to take this opportunity to, do, to introduce today's speaker. Mr. Jaden Ho graduated with a Master of Science in Quality Management. He also possesses a graduate diploma in Quality Management, an advanced diploma in Industrial Engineering, and a diploma in Mechanical Engineering. He is also a Certified Quality and Reliability Engineer, a registered lead auditor with IRCA, QSA, and GRCA, a registered safety officer with the Ministry of Manpower, a registered IRCA trainer for the lead auditor and internal auditor course. He is also a qualified trainer for PSB, SQI, SQI International, and NTC Learning Hub in the areas of quality management and ISO related courses. Now I'll pass the time to our speaker, Mr. Jaden. Thank you very much. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, panelists from the uh, NTC Learning Hub. Um, as what Bella had mentioned, well, it's, it's a long list now. Uh, honestly, I'm still learning. I'm also affected by the pandemic, as with everybody else. I think everyone is, is, is wondering, you know, if we could have a bigger gathering groups uh, in the coming Chinese New Year, I believe. Yes, is this one of the questions you have for us later on in this seminar? Do welcome, <laughs> but I couldn't give you an answer yet. I will have to consult the relevant authorities. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Bella. Thank you very much, uh, Learning Hub, for organizing this particular webinar. Well, um, this has been the uh, a hard time for many of us, challenging time. 
Uh, I'm very glad that uh, I've been invited to be the speaker for this particular very interesting topic. I think we are looking into business continuity beyond, beyond this very challenging period. We call this a post-pandemic era. Yes, just call me Jaden. Um, my main experience actually is in the IMS auditing. We have been doing this training. We've been doing a, a consultation. We've been implementing many, many ISO related systems. So this group has done a good job. Uh, we have the uh, develop a, a lot of uh, industrial practitioners eh, to implement ISO related systems in your company. And I believe many of you today uh, are also uh, Learning Hub's uh, clients. Eh? If not, some of you may have already met me in some of the other trainings. Um, regardless, what I'm going to do today is to actually present to you what this, those newer standards and what are those standards that could be of interest to all of us after we have undergone this uh, very challenging period. Now, uh, I'm not saying that we have already passed that period. Yeah, we read reports. We are living with the virus. We 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 are doing our very best to overcome, if not to mitigate the impacts given to all of us, as well as our organization, yes. Now, um, there's one question which I want to throw to the, to the group uh, before I even start uh, giving you this, uh, the new, new, new standards introductions. And the first question is, hey, what next? You know, is your organization a bit panicky in continuing your business in the years to come. And the next question that many people may want to, to ask, you know, uh, hey, what next if uh, you know, we have man managed to uh, mitigate or micron, you know, we, have, we have managed to, to, to mitigate the Delta variant. You know? What happens you know, if there's an ABC variance that comes one year, two years, three years, um, later, you know, is, is my organization still able to tahan, you know, so-called? Uh, are we able still to withstand, you know, the, the impact you know, of the next, next uh, 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 so-called uh, pandemic? Touch wood, of course, you know, no one of us wish to see pandemic ever again. Eh? We wish this is going to be the last, and I hope this is the last. Okay, however, business must goes on, right? I mean, look at it, you know, look at the, 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 the during the circuit breaker where everyone is so excited about, hey, what, what, uh, 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 buying groceries, you know, and wondering, you know, what are we going to eat, you know, if we can't go out and buy things and the hawker centers are all closed. Hey, suddenly we have a savior, right? Food delivery company starts to spring up. Hey, you know, these are the guys that, you know, I always, always joke among my, 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 my trainees, you know, when I give trainings. Hey, you know, during the, the, the first few months of the pandemic, where everyone is supposedly to stay at home. I see no cars while traveling to AYE, towards Jurong, towards Changi Airport. You know, no cars. Look at the causeway. Wow, you know, it's, it's no jam. Everyone is so happy, you know. However, we do see all our grab food. Uh, um, um, heroes, you know, we, we see motorbikes, you know, we see all sorts of transportation all around. However, these are for food deliveries, yes, to feed us, to help us tie it across a tight time so that we still have good food to eat. Is this an opportunity during a pandemic? Everyone, think about it. They are impact to us, yes. We, 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 we are held up, you know, we, we couldn't go to work. We have to work from home, you know. SMM has given us something to learn about besides the three-letter words, SMM, <laughs> safe management measures. However, opportunities do come about. Hey, look at food delivery. Look at Zoom. Look at Teams. Where are we today? Without Zoom, this seminar or this webinar wouldn't be possible. The trainers would not be able to continue you know, imparting knowledges. And Learning Hub has adopted Zoom very, very early. Many of our classes today are in Zoom, virtual sessions. Well, there's always a little bit of an impact, the risk, you know, and uh, we are not able to meet our participants face-to-face. You know, -face. Well, the personal touch may not be there anymore, but marketing staff, sales staff, are still meeting our customers far in Europe, in Asia. Don't talk about Europe. Let's talk about Malaysia. Just a causeway. But we couldn't meet them for business negotiations, discussions. But Zoom helped us a lot. Virtual uh, 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 platforms do help us a lot. Yes? Is this an opportunity? Think about it, gentlemen and ladies. Well, because what we are going to discuss with you are the two systems that ISO has committed to deliver and to implement for us to implement in, within our organization 
to foster, to firm up our base in terms of a pandemic, possibly I can say it is a good time you know to launch this 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 uh, standard because we have more we have slightly more time we have slightly more resources now to explore systems and just to let you know later on you will see one slide that i'm going to show even our edb is giving some grants to support this system in such a tough period to organizations which are quality which can be qualified to to to, to uh, apply for the grant, of course, and also to implement such a system. Now, I think um, we have got a quite a big group today. Yes, I think many of you, ladies and gentlemen, come from organisations that had cert that had been certified to an IMS system. And I think IMS, you know, when I talk about ISO 9000, 45000, 14000 about environmental uh, management systems, I think everyone is very. Uh, uh, well, well, uh, I would say accustomed to, to such uh, standards already. Uh, IMS system is usually a, I would say, a platform to developing many, many new standards. I think the moment that you guys register for the webinar, you guys are interested in ISO a little bit, or maybe you know your boss may be interested a little bit. So ISO system, how do we go forward? You know, So in the uh, Switzerland, Geneva, where the headquarters of the ISO committees are, these people start to develop standards that actually caters yeah, for the next era. And one of them actually is what I'm going to introduce to you in a short while, business continuity management. Hey, the words is a, is a very powerful word, especially when we are faced with a situation like that. Uh, we have never thought about business continuity, isn't it, gentlemen and ladies? Um, in fact, uh, 10, 20 years ago, before SARS even comes about, you know, when I report to my work, I still remember, you know, in my, when I take up a first job, you know, I tell myself, hey, I finally got a job after graduating, you know, I'm happy, you know, because after a full few months of looking for a job, I got a very satisfactory job. I like my job. And I know that this job will continue to feed me and my family for years and years and years to come. Hey, is this a wrong mindset today? Look at pandemic, yet it causes many people to lose our job, right? Not mentioning about the uncertainty in front of us. So do we hope our organization to continue doing well? Are we hoping that? Yes. We are one of those interested parties. Allow me to use ISO terms in the year 2022. Interested parties. Are we one of those interested parties in thinking that my company should continue to work well, we should continue to do profit. My boss is going to be happy every day. And of course, when my boss is happy, usually we are happy because we do have bonuses. Hey, bonuses is coming, right? It's January timeframe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, interested parties are those people who are interested in our organization. Now, I, you know, last time, last time, I, I think I asked this question many times when ISO starts to use interested parties. And many of my trainees starts to ask me, hey, interested parties, don't have to ask me. The obvious answer is my customers. My customers are the one who is interested because, hey, I want my delivery to be done on time. Within five minutes, if you can give it to me, you are the king, you know, you, you're the best. No, I don't think so. I think the ranking changes a little bit. In today's market, in today's world, I think the employees, we, you and me, are the interested parties that actually fall well above the customers. Why? Because we want our organization to continue as businesses. We want to be employed today, tomorrow, possibly next day, 10 years later. Whether pandemic or not, we hope our business will continue and I hope my job is as stable as solid rock. Yes. Now, interested parties are those that are interested in our organizational system. Now, what happens if my organization collapse? It may not be just your rice bowl. It could be everybody's rice bowl. So in the mind of your boss, of course, they will do all sorts of things to sustain the business. Of course, don't talk about profit. You may say, hey, of course, it's, you know, it's, it's profit. It's the money that my boss is interested. No, if your boss is doing well, can you imagine? hundreds, thousands of our workforce will not be affected. And this is what we want to see. This is what even Singapore wants to see. Maybe the world, everyone wants to see that. So taking into consideration interested parties' needs, we have to understand what is next for our organization. Now, 
because we are in the era of a pandemic, gentlemen and ladies, what other interested parties are very concerned about the sustainability of our organization? Let me tell you one of them, the Ministry of Manpower. Is MOM very interested in your organization today? I think you have never, possibly some of you guys, especially certain industries, you have not seen MOM offices a long, long time. But recently, these guys have been patrolling your, 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 your offices. Maybe sometimes they're even besides you in your worksite, even besides you knowing it. You know, they just walk in. You know. And some of these inspectors are helping us. They wanted to see if we practice SMA. They wanted to see if we are saved. Are we taking care of ourselves, the workers, visitors in your organization? Because of what? Because of SMM and because of the fear that our workforce is infected. Yes. Well, if a company has staff that is uh, infected, touch wood, you know what will happen. You know what will happen, right? Um, that, was, that, was, that, that, that things happened to many of my clients uh, one and a half to two years ago, where certain construction industries, do you remember that, gentlemen and ladies? dormitories, many, many of our, our valuable uh, foreign workers, they were affected by the pandemic, but they, they were infected. Companies were to shut down many sites. In fact, when we pass through construction sites, it's a dead town, no activities. Oh my God. And there are many people, you know, many of my friends who spoke to PTO starts to complain, you know, hey, you know, my site is no movement. You know, when am I going to get my flat? Hey, this is all facts of life. And if your company is infected, touch wood, one of, one of two of your staff, possibly the operations will be affected. So interested parties, we have many regulatory bodies, customers. Well, yourself, very importantly, right? You want your work, you want your companies to take good care of you. That's why we have the uh, work from home arrangements. We hope we can do most of the things, if not all of the things at home and not affecting the delivery of your products and services. So there are risks. There are always risks. Impact to health and safety is always a risk. Many people start to think about risks after or during the time whereby we are engaged in fighting against the virus. I think, uh, I hope you guys are not uh, offended when I say this. Um, look at Malaysia. I mean, you know, um, they are fighting the virus. At the same time, a few weeks ago, they were fighting against flood. Natural disaster. No one could blame anyone because of the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the heavy rains, yeah? Climate change that causes certain monsoons, certain rains to, to fall. However, did we really experience that? Uh, we, we, we are hearing that, that. I'm looking through reports very honestly, and I'm very lucky in, in, my, in my generation, I have not really uh, gone through, experienced any real floods. I'm sure many of you senior than me, uh, we do experience this in Singapore before. My father's time, my parents' time, they were always saying, you know, the floods, you know, the water could go to the knee hike uh, at certain time, low-lying areas in Singapore flats. I've not experienced that. I'm very lucky. But we do have friends in Malaysia that are experiencing it. But we don't feel the pinch, gentlemen and ladies. We don't. We don't know the importance of continuing our life in a very, 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 very safe and sound environment. I think so. So I always tell my kids, you know, we are in a very lucky, we are in Singapore, everything is taken care of, you know, we do have floods, but the floods is wetting my shoes and I complain already, you know, it's not even up to my knee, you know, so I've been complaining, you know, hey, why, why is this, you know, so shallow, you know, it, it wets my shoe. Well, risk actually persists everywhere, every day, regardless of which country you are, regardless of who you are, you know, and regardless of which products or what services you, your company is offering. Let's open up our mindset. We do have risks and opportunities appearing in our, uh, throughout our operations in our company. Um, I always look at opportunities is because, you know, um, companies, your bosses, they like to 
explore you know new things i remember you know there was one season whereby the maritime oil and gas industry is so, wow is is doing very badly you know and of many of my clients converting you know the machines uh, to cater to pharmaceutical to medical products which is still booming which is still doing well of course we have to act fast we have to make use of opportunities and we have to embark on opportunities taking bearing certain risks risk of what risk of failure you have to dump in resources to convert the machines, isn't it? Example, you know, I have some clients doing machining, uh, spare parts, you know, they're just selling pumps, you know, they're selling uh, many, many um, electronic items, but they are selling based on distributors, dealership. They, they don't really um, sell based on uh, online platforms, but because of the pandemic, two years ago, they engage, they dump in certain money, they invested in developing a website and the website until today is doing very well. It's a, it cause, it um, uh, constitutes at least 30 to 40% of their sales until today. And they are very happy that they have embarked on it. Today I'm seeing, in fact, the latest one, I just I just Google a little bit yesterday night, you know, while, while doing shopping. As you see, even a, a senior man like me, you know, we are I'm, I'm interested in online shopping now. So don't you think organizations are looking into this as an opportunity? It was an opportunity. Today, I believe this is already a matured way of doing business. But two years ago, it is really an opportunity. Even Metro, you know, I'm looking at the Metro. Metro, I'm able to buy clothings, I'm able to buy household appliances uh, through the website today. Everything from tabs, everything from face masks, everything you want, we have it online. Is this an opportunity? It was an opportunity. Yes? Now, gentlemen and ladies, let me take this opportunity to show you what ISO could actually do for us. Um, of, of course, I'm not talking about ISO 9045. It has been matured. It is with us for a long, long time. In fact, easily 10 over years. When I started to learn ISO, it was 1987. That was when the first ISO 9000 comes into town. Today, ISO 9000 is a very matured standard, maybe older than you and me. <laughs> Allow me to say that. Okay. Now, with the current risk, we certainly need a more structured approach towards managing them. And how does organization does this? Now, a 9,000 won't help you to prepare for various business continuity measures. It may not prompt you to develop plans to mitigate a pandemic, for example. Or how do I actually do a proactive identification of such risks? Or should I call it impacts to business continuity, okay? Now, ISO teams back in Geneva, TC, they have developed this particular standard called ISO 22301. Why Learning Hub decides to have this seminar? Why are we talking about risks and opportunities? Because the fact is that we are faced with various risks today in this world. Of course, virus, um, is the biggest risk of all. Of course, people may be also talking about, you know, wow, North Korea, you know, recently, just, just today, they have fired another missile off the airport. Eh? So they have done four tests. Do you call it tests or try runs, whatever you want to call it, um, within this, this month or so, you know, after ending 2022. Is this a sign that things are going badly? I'm not, I'm not so sure. I, I can't comment on that. But what I can say is, hey, with ISO 22301, we are told that an organization shouldn't stay put. We are told that an organization should always start to identify impacts and learn how to recover from such disruptive incidents. Now, what are disruptive incidents? It can be a flood. It can be a pandemic. It can generally be a trade war you know, between US and China that causes many organizations to fail. Uh, and it, it could be a shift in consumers pattern that causes our customers to be to be buying from our competitor and not ours because our products wow very very nice good quality but unfortunately the younger generation doesn't like it i remembered you know when i uh, started to uh, uh, redeco you know a, a portion of my house you know, and i said hey this curtain looks good you know it's always very durable we have tried that many times you know since my old younger times and my children were saying hey you know forget about this <laughs> this is an old-fashioned curtain we don't buy this anymore it's used for the toilet not for the bedroom please 
you know, well, something durable, something that looks very nice, may or may not be suitable now for a consumer today. Yes, today, let's board a bus, be it uh, uh, any, pro any bus operators. The bus today looks, doesn't, doesn't really look like a bus in our olden days time. It's so nicely built up, the cushions are so nice, it's, it's aircon, you know, it's so neat and tidy. What, what are consumer needs? It's an ever-changing needs. Whenever there are such an issue that appears, an organization has to think very quickly. They have to develop a plan. Now, what is this plan? In the ISO 22301, this plan is basically called a BCP, a Business Continuity Plan. Now, a BCP is a plan that helps you to develop the potential impacts to your organizations with respect to performances, be it profit, be it sustainability, be it employees' um, welfare, work, and also basically towards, uh, towards getting a more beneficial relationship between you and your customers. So what are those disruptive incidents that you can think of, gentlemen? I think one of those things that you can always think of is, hey, with the pandemic coming up, people are working from home. There are many things that we couldn't do in office. In fact, in fact, I was told by one of my clients, you know, some of the, the staff are not able to get access to the VPN, not, access, not able to get access to certain um, 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 system uh, where you need really very high data or you really need certain very controlled access. So they have to go back to the office bearing the risk of the pandemic at that time during the CB period. Is this something which we can uh, manage? Is this something that we should already be thinking about in our BCP and correct it or maybe even put into action the contingency measures when such impact starts to come? Um, it's time to think about it, gentlemen, if you have not done it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, and many of us are not ready, honestly speaking. When, I, when I've been doing auditing, you know, when an audit company is with ISO 45,000, you know, many people are looking into what we have today to develop a risk management plan. But are we looking into what could possibly happen tomorrow and develop a BCP? This is what ISO 22301 actually wants us to do. So during the setup, during the audit time, auditors will start to question you, hey, gentlemen and ladies, what would be the possible impact to your industries? Now, assuming we are doing, uh, let's say you are from an IT company, you know, an IT company, usually when they go for ISO, very simple, you know, quite basic implementation. And many of the staff keeps the such, they are, there's no health impact to me. There's no uh, 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 hazards, you know, no risk, no worries. Our staff are very safe because we are dealing just with computers, books. We are very safe. Don't talk about uh, health and safety. Hey, yes, they don't talk about health and safety. So one of the key risks wouldn't be health and safety. But how about cybersecurity, gentlemen and ladies? Have we seen reports recently? Many. It concerns us. Scams. Did you see that? Many banks were reporting people who get scammed of thousands and thousands of dollars simply because of cybersecurity issue. So is cybersecurity issue a possible disruptive incident? Answer for yourself. Tell me if your answer is no. Not possible. Right? Now, from, an I, from a company that supports uh, 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 infrastructure relating to infocoms, IT security, cyber security, system being hacked, virus attack, are very, 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 very genuine concerns uh, for a disruptive uh, operation. How about oil and gas? You know, we are talking about uh, people who are who are um, um, oil oil rigs. You know, they are being greatly affected by the uh, lower in demand. But uh, well, uh, depends on which side you're looking at. Huh? Today, the oil price is just zooming up, and then we see our electrical bills going up. But I'm not so sure if this is a good sign, you know. But to the oil and gas industry, possibly this is the a, 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 a firmer response eh, to the past few years of, of oil dipping below average. Okay. Now, what is 22,301 now? It is actually an ISO management system, very similar to what we have learned about NXSL, 
in an ISO system that looks like this. But AI 2301 is written in a way where it actually serves one very main purpose. All right, allows an organization management team to seriously look into your own operations and determine how your business could be continued in the time where there are disruptive incidents, cybersecurity, pandemic. Let's say half of your workforce couldn't come, couldn't report to work due to a, 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 um, a change in climate situation where, you know, as you know, in Malaysia, you know, many of the workers couldn't, couldn't travel because, you know, floods everywhere, you know. So are these going to be a concern to your organization? I believe so. Yes. In fact, uh, I don't know many of, how many of you are in the cleaning industries, eh, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, I've also got the real, real feedbacks uh, from certain uh, cleaning industries. As you know, cleaners are being deployed to, to, to various companies um, to perform housekeeping exercises. You can't have a toilet that is not clean for two days, isn't it? You can't have your offices, you know, not, not being tidy up and the cleaning ladies or, or gentlemen is not there to, 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 to clean up the floors, you know, um, especially clean rooms, especially, you know, when you have, you need to have a more tidy environment to work. Well, clients are now, and by mind you, when I say clients, they are the big MNCs, they are the statutory boards, you know, they engage cleaners as well, correct? Enough? And they are the one that is demanding now to the cleaning companies, hey, give me a BCP. What for? I'm just a 20-man company, you know. I, I have you to clean up your toilets, you know. What BCP are you talking about, you know? Well, a BCP to these customers is a plan that you can assure me of the minimum number of workers that you're going to send to me on a daily basis, even though in the time of a pandemic, even though your workers are trapped in a flood, hey, sorry, you know, I, I wouldn't care. I'm just worried that, hey, you know, with customers coming to my place, I want it to be neat. And your job, when I engage you as a supplier, is to ensure that the work environment is reasonable. So you, you, you can't, you know, tell me because of a pandemic, work from home, all my cleaners are not available to your site. So a BCP would be able to give the confidence to your customers that, hey, I'm able to continue my business with you, even though in the event where half of my workforce may not be able to, to work due to infection, or they may be occupied somewhere, or you know, because of shortage of manpower, you are able, you are supposed to redeploy, you know, certain workers to certain areas. Well, very unfortunately, customers are not really concerned. They know there's impact because of the pandemic. They know that, but they have to answer to their customers, to their bosses, to their management as well. So, what are we looking at today? We are looking at customers asking contractors for a BCP before you are being awarded or before your contracts are being renewed. Now, I'm not saying that all customers are reacting that way. I'm saying that 22301 would be one of those very, very a formal and structured way for you to convince your customers that, hey, my company today, we are equipped with all the backup plans. We have and we know what to do in the event of certain things. Cybersecurity, if my system got hacked, what happened? PDBA, you know, oh no, if my customer's data are being, being a, 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 a siphon, you know, what are we going to do? We do have plans put up to entertain this. Well, workers, we do have plans work out to mitigate this risk, that risk, all the risk. This is the result of a 22301. Now, isn't it, it, it comes in, come, coming at the right time? And, and why we are throwing this seminar out? Because we are trying to entice the, the interest of all organizations today in setting up a system that works for us, works for you, works for your boss, works for the whole community. Can you imagine if Singapore, relying on so many uh, of uh, foreign uh, workers to, 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 to help us in doing certain things, uh, tourism, you know, in uh, beefing up our economy. If we fail in certain of our key businesses, we may not be what we are today. We have to work hard. We have to maintain our businesses. Yes. Now, 22301, very similar to what ISO 9000 is, 
it actually pursues a system of consistency, two Cs, consistency and a controlled process to develop a BCP. Now, once we have the two Cs in our organization, we are quite sure that this is going to be persistent. This is going to be consistent. This is going to work. And someone in your company, normally the MD, would be the one that is chairing this because you know why? BCP needs resources. BCP needs budgeting. Yes, so it's very unlike about other, other standards, you know. Um, no offense huh, if I say this, huh, gentlemen and ladies. Um, some companies, you know, they do have 45,000 and ask them, who's the one in charge of the ISO 9000? They said, my quality manager. Who is it in charge uh, of your 45,000? They said, my safety manager. What happened to your MD? What happened to your CEO? What happened to your top management? You know, are they involved? Oh, well, you know, he comes, but uh, <laughs> very rarely. Well, there's a bad sign. For 22301, not very possible for him to sell. Not very possible. Why? Because a BCP needs the endorsement of many, many parties. Not just the safety department, not just the quality department, but a bunch of important management staffs. Financial. Now, finance people are usually not involved in 45,000, 9,000. Sad to say, they should, in, they should be involved if you ask me from the auditor's perspective, but I'm just telling you, hey, you know, most of the time, hey, you know, the quality of the safety guys are involved, but not the finance people. In a business continuity plan, very sad to say, financial involvement is needed because of budgeting, yeah, because of, hey, finance department are using systems that uh, could be prone to cybersecurity impacts. Aren't they involved? Yes, they are very much involved. Can you imagine, you know, um, if your system got hacked and uh, transfer of funds is done uh, in an uncontrolled manner, wow, that, 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 that sounds bad. Yeah, that's a bad thing. Now, with these requirements, yes, we are now ready to develop a BCP, isn't it? Now, a BCP looks very simple. If you allow me to draw you a chart, basically it is the list of potential impacts against the mitigating areas. Now, there's no $1 for all BCP. <laughs> there was one joke, uh, one, one question, you know. Uh, asked by one of my trainees uh, previously when I gave this training. Hey, Mr. Mr. Ho, uh, my company doesn't have the budget to set up a BCP, but I, I, can I give you $100? Can, can you give me a BCP? Because I need to show it to my customer. This is one of those cleaning companies that I was mentioning. And I said, there's no $100 BCP because a BCP is developed in a customized manner. Your organization, his organization, her organization has a different potential disruptive incidents, agree? I mean, pandemic aside, this is the one that everyone gets involved. But I mean, not all organizations would have the same contingent, uh, I mean, would have the same impact. That calls for a same contingency plans. Agree, gentlemen and ladies, yes. Now, every organization differs. So there's always a customized plan and no standardized plan. So there's no $1, $2, $100 BCP. Um, possibly $100 BCP would have one item on it for sure, COVID-19 impact. That one you don't have to even consider about training and getting yourself set up. I think uh, consult MOM website, you can do the BCP yourself <laughs> for COVID-19 preventions. Am I right to do so? We are not experts. Right? What do you do in the in the, the, the what, what 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 must you do the moment you step out of your house? <laughs> Wear a mask, <laughs> keep social distance. This is what has already uh, driven into into us, you know, for two years. And I think <laughs> I think I always think this way. Even when the the, the mask wearing uh, process is 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 not made mandatory, <laughs> maybe the first day of after that 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 uh, 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 happy day yeah, that we don't have to put on a mask. I think when I go out, I will still, break, I will still, still remember to put a mask. Okay. Now, what are the things that we need to do? How, how can we actually develop? If we know 22301 is an important standard, why, why the industry is not you know, paying attention to it? Well, certain industries are already paying attention to it, uh, but not the general ones like manufacturing and so on. The purpose of this seminar we hope to bring this closer to a generic company 
in Singapore, be it whether you are a sales officer, be it whether you are manufacturing a stamping operations, a precision machining house, maybe an IT software design company, you do have the need to remain sustained in a business. You need to go on for the sake of your bosses, for the sake of the workers, especially after a pandemic. We are now facing possibly unemployment rates that is, you know, hovering at certain standards, eh, certain level. We don't want to lose our jobs, gentlemen and ladies. We hope to continue. We hope your bosses comes to know about 22301 soon and he realized the importance of our BCP. How can we, of course, Learning Hub, hope that we could be of some help to the industries? We do have courses awareness course and internal auditor course to brief the staff up in its competence to handle 22301. When I say handle, it means what are the requirements? How do I set up a BCP? How do I determine the business impact and determine if this is important, needs to be prioritized, or that one no need to be prioritized, but it could be developed three years later. Now, a BCP is an ongoing exercise. You develop a BCP whenever they are new potential impacts. Let's take for example, I remember many years ago when I talk about BCP, when I talk about uh, risk, uh, risk to a company, and I, I, I talk about earthquake, and I talk about floods, you know, in a general cost, and many people laughed at me. Hey, Singapore, we can never have earthquake, please, Jaden. You know, hey, you know, we can never have floods. Look at where our HDB is building on very good grounds. We, we should not encounter floods. Just a few years back, Orchard Road flooded. <laughs> right? Something happened. And at the Yishun Junction, just a few weeks ago, because of a heavy rain, Yishun Central flooded. Ah, sorry, not flooded. Not, not, not Central, sorry. The crossroad, I think, leading to Yishun somewhere avenue flooded. Of course, that is not because of the climate change. That is probably, I, I, I later I read the papers, it, one of the contractors don't really, uh, I mean, did something wrong or something like that. And it causes, you know, certain uh, drainage to be, to, be, to be blocked. Well, regardless of whether it is the rain or it is a man's fault that causes the flood, if our company happens to be there and we are drowned, the, the equipments are drowned, production couldn't carry on. Is this an impact? It is a need for a BCP. That is why we are selling you, hey, this is a new system. We are looking into developing three, uh, 22301 for many organizations. Today, there are many customers that are implementing this. I shall share with you what, what is the government doing now to encourage people to go for this scheme. Okay, Now, knowing BCP, much better after I speak. You should now know that, hey, you know, you should develop a consultant, getting a consultant maybe also to develop a standard that is equivalent, if not able to get your organization certified. Now, name a few. Huh? Some of those key industries that have implemented 22301 quite effectively are the medical sectors, hospitals, those that manufactures medical devices. Yes, uh, I, and I dare to say, uh, vaccine manufacturers, as you know, right? We do. We are soon. We soon. We will have uh, vest, uh, 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 such an industry in, in in Singapore already, and I'm sure they need to have something which is equivalent to a two two three or one, because they have to sustain operations. And this is why I call it safety products. You know, safety products. They 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 couldn't be disrupted. You know, the supply cannot be disrupted in the areas of a. In a time of a pandemic, you know, can 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 you can you can you imagine if someone tells you, hey, sorry, you know, we, we don't have any more vaccines, you 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 take your own medicine. Hey, we sorry, you know, we don't have mass supply, you know, you, you, you just put a cloth over your nose. I, I think that would be a bad impression. Yeah. Um, we are glad, we are happy, we are we are lucky. We we are able to have constant good supply yeah, of this. But how do I get good supply? We have to look forward. We have to pre-em that we need to do an order fast, right? And we need to give this trust to a company that could manufacture these products with confidence and able to commit to the supply. Can you imagine if we pay a lot of money to an organization to, to supply us with vaccine and one day we know that this money goes down to drain because this particular manufacturer hots its production due to corruptions. <laughs> 
Yes. And corruption is another risk, ladies and gentlemen. And later on, I will spend a little time to introduce you to this new standard again from ISO, anti-bribery standards. Okay, allow me to have some time. But before that, let me just share with you uh, the grant details. Okay, uh, the grant details are available on the EDB website. They allow up to 80% of a government grant yeah, for companies willing to implement 22301. Of course, you may say, hey, you know, why, why such standards have? And hey, I, I, I uh, set up 45,000, you know, there isn't any uh, grant. Uh, no, don't worry. The grant is basically for new products and products that we deem able to help a company to improve on business continuity. So therefore, there are some special standards that is only eligible. There's a time frame for applying. Yeah, consult us. Yes, give us a call. We should be able to assist you in due course. Okay, now, as I said, um, give me a little bit of time. Let me introduce you to another standards, maybe of interest to you. Medical professionals, uh, procurement house, IPO officers, as you know, we have many IPO officers in Singapore today, design houses, R&D companies. They are interested in ISO 37001, which is an anti-bribery system. Again, I challenge you, gentlemen and ladies, flip through CNA, flip through newspapers, Look through, are there any more, are there more and more cases of such briberies thingy happening in, 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 in local context? I, I mean, I don't know, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, you know. Um, when I was, you know, when I, when I uh, becomes uh, knowledgeable about corruption, bribery, these two words, uh, I don't remember, you know, companies or people um, accepting bribes uh, so commonly, so, so, so conveniently. But today it happens. There's, there's many, um, People get caught, you know, charged in court today. You know, they talk about, hey, you know, you, 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 siphon how many thousand dollars, 20,000, you know, from even clinics, from a small uh, company. You know, we do see staff, you know, you know, um, extracting uh, the uh, petty cash or something like that. Yeah? Um, do we have controls in your workplace to prevent this from happening, to mitigate this uh, anti bribery, this bribery uh, uh, possibility? Maybe we don't. We are too concerned about risk. We are too concerned about safety. We are too concerned about fall from height. We are too concerned about falling into confined space. Am I right, gentlemen and ladies? We've forgotten about the soft, softer crimes eh, of which anti-bribery comes about. An anti-bribery system adopts similar to the system which I share with you on the 22301. It's still on the NSSL. So it makes integrating to our current system very easy. In fact, it is just like this, to integrate 22301 or 37001 into our existing IMS. Trust me, gentlemen and ladies, it's not going to be setting up another new products that's so totally different from your current system. It's going to be quite similar. In fact, it's stackable if you allow me to use the word stackable. This is 9,000, this could be 23, this could be 37,000, you know, it just stack up. It makes implementation easy. I mean, I mean, that is the spirit of ISO now. It makes systems very easily stackable so that companies don't face, you know, problems with resources trying to build up another system. I still remember last time when people had an ISO system of 9,001 and to go into a 14,045, it's like building a different block. It's like building three blocks of flats rather than one block and stack up. Today, no. Today, even our industries, you know, even uh, 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 HDB, you know, we are, we, are, we are looking into stacking up HDB flats rather than building up from the structure, right? Now. So it's a faster way, save money, cost saving, resources much less, but it's equally safe. Equally safe and possibly it looks nicer, I think. Yes. So these are the improvements that people are looking into. Yes, so improving our system, embarking our system with an anti-bribery system, again, same thing, gentlemen and ladies, creates a trust to your organization's customers. Your customers will be very happy. Hey, you know, this company has a BCP setup. He also see the risk of an anti-bribery uh, bribery happening in their company. So therefore, they maintain and enhance their reputation, the company's image and reputation by implementing an anti-bribery system. An anti-bribery system, look at things from perspective of training your staff. What is right, what is wrong? 
controlling, making stricter certain processes of approval, making stricter certain processes of execution. We call it anti-bribery controls, gentlemen. Now, instead of having a BCP, we are now looking into having an anti-bribery control mechanism within all processes in your workplace. Now, again, this is different from ISO 9000. Very much concerned about quality, health and safety for 45,000. This round, 37,000 goes all out very similar to your BCP, every department's process flow will have to be studied. We have to have an anti-bribery control management plan set up. Again, all these systems that I have spoken are eligible for audits, eligible for you to get yourself certified and share with your customers, this is you above your competitors. It is an edge above those who are struggling to, to do this business, okay? So you'll be something at higher level above others because you do have a trust given to you. Hey, you know, my staff has been properly trained. Our processes are governed with an anti-bribery controls. We do have BCPs. We do have 22301 systems in place. So therefore we are actually able to shout louder in promoting customers' confidence, yes? Got it? Now, same thing, ladies and gentlemen, before I end the session, I would like to share with you the trainings that Learning Hub provides. Anti-bribery. We have a one-day awareness course, two days management system auditor course to teach you how do you audit against 37,000. Now, we are not financial trained. You know, we are not the uh, CID or we are not the... Uh, uh, what is that organization, the anti-bribery ones? Uh, CPIB, eh? we are not CPIB inspectors. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not one of them as well. I'm just knowing ISO 9000, you know, uh, it's my baby. I love ISO standards. So I'm here to share with you. We are not training you in this course to be a CPIB officers. We are training you in this course to audit your own company processes against anti-bribery practices within an organization, yes. And of course, we do consultancy supports. Average six months, we should be able to develop a good system for you, for you to get yourself certified. It's not going to be, we say, acceptable or not. You, your company has to be subjected to a certification exercise to make sure that our products, to make sure that your system is meeting the minimum requirements of the certification house before you are awarded a certificate. Now, this is how uh, these two new standards works. This is how we could, yeah. I think, I think by now, you know, we, we are the one who could actually assist you in developing a system like that or training your staff to be capable to manage and maintain the systems like that, okay? Now, before I go, let me share with you this EDB grant that is being uh, put in the market. Yeah? Uh, you could. Uh, SMEs, they are able to get up to 80% 80, 80 Many of my clients have already gotten it uh, No worries, it's not scam <laughs> it's, it's true We have already assisted many of my clients uh, personally doing that um, Non-SME, you are still eligible for it But there's always a cap line, you know? As a guide, they always say you know 60% and things like that uh, Just take note of the time frame By March 2022, the official time for application is closed, is to be closed. Um, don't ask me about extensions. Uh, I have not got an idea. We just check out the website. We just check out with the relevant authorities and we couldn't get an answer whether there'll be an extension. It has been there for quite some time, um, but this seminar comes at a good time. It kind of like uh, inform every one of you here, gentlemen and ladies, uh, of that time frame, a very tight time frame that we have. But of course, it's always a goal if it is helping us, business continuity, remember, we have to remain in, competi in a competitive state to always fight, not against the virus, but to fight against our competitors and to get our customers satisfied all the time. Yes? Now, I hope I've given you enough uh, um, idea yeah, of these two standards. Yes? And of course, just remember, Learning Hub, we provide trainings, we provide consultation helps to many of you guys in terms of implementing such a system. Of course, we also do um, other systems, yeah? 
we also do 17025, 55,000. So if you feel that there's a need for you to understand further, do leave us a note. Uh, we're going to have a, a, um, a survey being done later on. So feel free to give us what you want to know. Tell us what you want to know. Uh, our contacts, our experts will be in touch with you, myself, including myself. Yeah, I, I, I could be able to go to your factory, understand better, see what are the best standards that you could implement. Okay, now uh, without further ado, let me just pass you to Miss Sarah for her part. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining this uh, webinar. My name is Sarah. I'm from Learning Hub Sales. Uh, before we move on to Q and A, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, do a quick. Uh, let you know a quick promotion of uh, what we have on our hands for you. So, uh, Jaden, the next one, please. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what we are having is uh, we are going to uh, we're going to offer you to get you started to have a twenty percent off all consultancy services as well as a uh, ISO awareness training course and internal auditor course that is uh, being held at NTUC Learning Hub. So, uh, this is. Uh, exclusive only to our webinar participants. I will be leaving uh, my contact details later in the chat, uh, and then you can uh, you email me, give me a call, you know, let us know how we can help you, not just on these two standards that uh, Jaden has gone through, um, as well as other standards as well, and also how to tap on the fundings uh, that is available uh, for your company to tap on. So uh, before... Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, before I end this thing, um, I would like your help to uh, do a very quick poll, about 10 seconds of your time, to have a very quick poll. And then after that, we will we move on to uh, Q&A where we will be answering your questions. Right? Thank you. Maybe I'll take this time to answer Mr. Tan's question. Mr. Tan has left a question in the chat box asking about besides awareness courses, do you also do implementation training? Um, Mr. Tan, no worries about that. In fact, uh, besides the internal auditor course where we are training people to audit your own 37,001, we do have awareness. We do, in the awareness session, we are actually giving you hands on practices to implement. A BC, uh, sorry, to advise you on the steps towards implementing a BCP. So if let's say you guys are interested to know a bit about BCPs and how it could actually help you, um, the awareness session will be a first step eh, towards engaging your staff into these new standards. Lah. Yeah, so awareness would be the course that you should be interested in, if I hear you correctly. Yes, pass, you, pass back to Bella. Yeah. Feel free, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have questions, uh, just shoot. If you wish to have your, answer, your questions answered in a private manner, just leave it in the chat box. I shall be able to try our best to get back to you. Otherwise, leave your answers in a poll. My sales uh, colleagues will be getting, getting in touch with you as well. Thank you, Mr. Rajkumar. Your presence is appreciated as well.
Hi, Ron. Allow me to answer your question, Ron. Uh, is the ISO training schedule available? Um, honestly, these two standards is, are very new and uh, we are launching it. That's why we have this uh, webinar to equip everyone with that um, options. Um, currently, the trainings that uh, we are concentrating a lot on would be the uh, ISO standards that already has been in the market for a long time. And that, that's the one that actually uh, is uh, frequently being conducted. For organizations who are interested in these two standards, uh, you can always approach Sarah and her team and also approach uh, our customer service. We will be able to assist you on a separate individual cases, not a worry. Um, we, we are progressively launching this onto the uh, NTUC Learning Hub uh, schedule as well. Uh, but if you do have the need to know more, to uh, engage us on a one-to-one -one discussions, no, obliga no, no obligations, just, just uh, give us a ring. Sarah, would you be leaving your contact? Uh, I have already left uh, my, can, uh, are y'all able to see? I've already left my contact, uh, my email and my phone number. Y'all can call me, text me, so that you don't have to talk to the machine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think Sarah has been uh, an experienced uh, person in the ISO related field. So when you talk about ISO, she will know what are the things that you will, you 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 require. So I, I think one thing we also wish that uh, everyone to be aware of is that you know there's quite a lot of other ISO standards. If your organization be calibration, for example, you may need 17025. Uh, asset management, you may need 55. Or it may not be within this this two standards that we are. Uh, sharing with you today, just uh, feel free to approach Sarah as well. And we, we are also more than capable to assist you in that. Yeah. If there is no other questions, thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Discover how ISO standards can assist your organization in achieving business continuity. On behalf of NTUC Learning Hub and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.